with the stillness and the discomfort of all of the thoughts that come in and know that you aren't alone. Um, sometimes it feels like we're the only person on our little island of life, but let's reach out. Um, you know, if you have FaceTime or Messenger or whatever, reach out to somebody you haven't spoken to. No, not not that ex that you probably shouldn't be speaking to, but you know, it's your life. But, you know, like an old friend or one of your favorite cousins you haven't seen in a long time or, you know, just a simple meaningful small things can make a difference in your whole vibe yeah that is my thought for the day I have also read a whole lot of books this is what I've been trying this is what I've been thinking to tell all of you so it's been a while since I've talked about you know, the audiobooks that I'm listening to and all that, and I've burned through a couple. I'm having some tea. Um, let me go into my Goodreads real quick. And so, I'm, you know, I'm into fantasy books mostly, so I've been enjoying those a lot. And there have been some really interesting ones that came out. Where are my red books? I know I just finished The Midnight Lie, which is actually in... Let's see. Here we go. It is a fantasy story. Um, here we go. This is the the, the blurb. And it's an L. Okay, so this is the genre. Sorry. Uh, epic LGBTQ romantic fantasy about learning to free ourselves from the lies others tell us and the lies we tell ourselves. That is that. Is that. Where Narim Lee lives, crime abounds, a harsh tribunal rules. This is a little too detailed. So, boom, check it. The. Main character lives in this closed off, walled up place, right? And everyone has like this really basic life, and you know, everything is as it is, or it's always been as it is, or something like that is what they would tell people once they start asking questions about the town and like, why is this this way? And they're like, it's always been this way, and so. It's interesting because there's a turn of events when this peculiar bird comes into their neighborhood and everybody, you know, their life is so boring. They're like, something new, let's all go after it, catch it, whatever. And so when this pivotal moment comes in, she meets a stranger. And once she meets the stranger, it kind of opens up to. All of this, all of these views and perceptions, and she starts questioning all of these things that she's never questioned before. I will tell you, though, I wanted to shake the main character because there are moments that it's like, child, like, wake up. But, you know, um, people who have been abused may not realize that that's what's going on, especially if they've been gaslit for a long time. And I say that not to tell you, you know, how other people think it's because I am very aware. So, but there's magic in it. There's a very interesting conversation, not only about being LGBTQ, but also race. There's underlying conversations about race, classism, and what else? 
also like sexism and patriarchy and all of these things, which I enjoy most of that stuff. Uh, I didn't even know what it was about. I was just like, this looks interesting. Let me just poop. And then next thing I know, I'm wrapped up in the the story. The ending, I did not expect the ending. I was like, oh, oh, okay. So book two, there's going to be a book two. And I can't wait to see what unravels because of the interesting turn that it took. So that was really interesting for me. So that is called The Midnight Lie, book one by Marie Rutkowski. Let's talk about Serpent and Dove. So, man. Serpent and Dove is a book on brujas, basically. It's a very witchy book. And it's, it was so much fun, honestly. Uh, It's kind of like you're thrown into this life and you're following the main character and everything, you know, I'm thinking she's going to be, you know, living her best life and all of these things. And next thing you know, love comes into play. I don't know. It was, it was really interesting. The blurb isn't too long. So it says, bound as one to love, honor, or burn. Two years ago, Louise Leblanc, oh, there's a lot of, not a lot, but there's a considerable amount of French. Um, I like languages and I happen to understand French. So that was, I found it really interesting. Um, Louise Leblanc fled her coven and took shelter in the city of Cesarine forsaking all magic and living off whatever she could steal. There, witches like Lou are hunted and feared and and burned. Sworn to the church as a chasseur, Reed Diggory has lived his life by one principle. Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. His path was never meant to cross with Lou's, but a wicked stunt forces them into an impossible union. The war between witches and church is an ancient one and Luz unable to ignore her growing feelings, Uh, yet powerless to change what she is. A choice must be made and love makes fools of us all. This book was a lot of fun Um, because she's not your regular, oh, I'm gonna follow all the rules and be a lady and be, she is a cussing you know she dresses up as a man she does all kinds of she steals all kinds of stuff and so she's a lot of fun and then the other character is very by the book and so the friendships and the conversations and making fun it they do make fun of the church of how it used to be which is like very patriarchal in nature it's hilarious I thought it was so funny and I just realized there's a book too so I'm gonna want to read that on Goodreads and then Magic for Liars this is my final book if anybody's interested in any of these Magic for Liars I guess I was on a witch kick. Um, Wow. Magic for Liars is a... Another badass main character. Um, And it says, Ivy Gamble never wanted to be magic. She is happy with her life. And she has an almost sustainable career as a PI and an empty apartment and a slight drinking problem. AKA, she's a hot mess. And she doesn't wish she was like her strange sister, the magically gifted Professor Tabitha. But when Ivy is hired to investigate the gruesome murder of a faculty member at Tabitha's private academy, the stalwart detective starts to lose herself in the case, the life she could have had, and the answer to the mystery that just seems out of her reach. I feel like that's not even enough to explain this book. 
Homegirl is a hot mess. Her life is dangling by a cord. And then she has her perfect sister who happens to be magical. And all of these things start unraveling and she starts questioning everything. It is a little tough because there's, you know, there's loss, there's mourning, there's grieving, but it's also hilarious because of how relatable she can be. She does have like a drinking, like a drinking, drinking problem. Like, sis, it is 10 a.m. Why are you drinking vodka? But I think that it was a very honest book. And I like a whodunit kind of story. So this was interesting and it was unexpected. So I like it. I thought it was fun. It was a fun read. So check those out if you're interested in any of those. And that is all I have for you because I feel like I have rambled enough. I am working on getting hardcovers out. I just got copies of my book as a hardcover and I will never not hardcover again because they are everything. Everything, everything. So we are here. Hang in there. Um, send me voice memos of you know what, what's on your mind, what you're going through. Um, if you want me to share them, I will, or I can just respond to them. However, you can do that through the Anchor app. Um, you can tweet me, send me a message. If you know if you're feeling lonely, I will check in, check in with me. Um, I also have Friday feels check in on Instagram and Twitter. But if you are feeling a little, you know, cabin feverish or low or whatever, hit me up at creatively exposed without the E and I'll be here. Take care, everyone. Be safe. Um, and be easy. Don't forget that you are magic. No te olvides que eres magia. Pablié, use magic. Thank you. So Anchor and I have been kicking it for as long as Creatively Exposed has been alive, which September. And I am amazed at how easy it is to record an episode, edit an episode when on the go, either on my phone or in my laptop, and I'm getting paid for it. I get this sponsorship, and I don't need to have, you know, a huge listenership, which is pretty dope for the beginning. And it's free, y'all. So if you've been waiting to be heard on all of the sound waves, Apple, Google, etc., then this is your time. Get started on the Anchor app or online at anchor.fm and start that podcast today. Thank you for listening, everyone. Adios, no vemo. See you later. Napalequita. This was another episode of Creatively Exposed, and you can find me on all of the interwebs as Liz Flo, L-Y-S-Z-F-L-O, and on Instagram, Creatively Exposed without the E. Sign up, show up, hit me up. Um, There's also voice memos that you can send, rate, review, subscribe. Let's keep the conversation going. Thank you.